You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you on the Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. So since Oscar's Path ended so abruptly and we had a good amount of time to spare, I'm just going to go ahead and bring you guys a back-to-back -back episode of Violet Memoir for today. So yeah, hell, and guys enjoy it. Anyway, we're going to continue Lee's Path. Let's see, right over here. There we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're picking back up to where Wallace went back into his room. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. I'm going to you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. Alarm chain, you're up. All right, here we go. It takes me a moment to remember the name. Right, Lily Rose. She's in my group. Meeting her and the others is probably a good idea. I know where Edmund Hall is. Thankfully, I have my biology class there. Quickly checking my schedule on my phone, I only have one class on Tuesday. It's my second biology class of the week in Edmund Hall at 10 a.m. It'll be a tight fit, but the lecture finishes at 11.45, so it should be should, should be fine. Oh, speaking of 11, close, uh, well, a little bit after 11. I'm going to be going to see... Oh, yeah, this this video is going to be going up probably on Sunday, so... Really no point in me mentioning it. Yeah, because I'm going to see the Multiverse of Madness on Saturday, so it'll be the day before this video goes up. <laughs> so this is me coming to you guys in the future? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway... Anyway, guys, uh, back back to it, back to it! Getting sidetracked. With that out of the way, the only thing left to deal with is putting the rest of my luggage away. Hoisting myself off the bed, I get to work organizing my pants and the rest of my bag, which only has toiletries remaining. I've never been partial to cleaning, but reorganizing my room has always been a good way for me to calm down. Now that everything's done, I realize how empty this room is. I'm used to not having many friends, but without my parents in the house as well, it feels like, it feels like it's missing something. It's small, but a twinge of sadness starts to flow through me. Bing! Chandler, bing! The phone startles me out of my melancholy. I'm expecting it to be Lily again, telling me someone couldn't make it, but I see a text message from someone else instead. It's from Lee, and it's a, f and it's a few by the looks of it. Yo! Eating dinner with my sis, and I saw some mail on my phone. You might want to check it out. It's about our group meeting up tomorrow. It's not often I get messages from people that aren't my parents. It's silly, but these little texts bring a small warmth to my chest. Yeah, I saw. I got a class right before it, but I should be fine. I hope I don't sound too formal, but even my parents make fun of the way I text. Shouldn't you let her know? We can just push it back 30 minutes. I'll be fine. It, it, it won't be a stress. If you say so. Have you eaten yet? Not yet. I figured. This is why I asked. Jesus, kid. You better make yourself some food or get some. Get some, huh? No, oh, I plan to. Okay? Okay, okay, I understand. I'll go get some now. Good. I'll catch you tomorrow. My sis says hi, too. That brings a smile to my face. I can't wait to meet her. I hope that both of you have a good night, then. He doesn't respond to that, but the swelling in my stomach stops me from overthinking it. He's right about food, though. I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten much today. The Chinese place down the road should still be open. I'll get something from there tonight. I don't have any groceries to cook anything in the shared kitchen anyway. When I return, take out food in my hand, my eyes immediately fall onto the diary. It's still exactly where I left it, tossed haphazardly onto the deck at the end of my bed. I can't exactly return to it, so I guess it couldn't hurt to read it. I couldn't exactly return it, so I guess it wouldn't hurt to read it. Plus, I might be able to figure out who the diary belongs to. I take a seat on the barely cushioned chair, trying to ignore the guilt in my chest. At least they have a gap in the back for tails. Making sure the diary isn't in the splash range, I eat some of my sweet and sour chicken. I'd be horrified if I returned a diary covered in food stains. Satisfied, I open up the diary and find a frustrating surprise. On the inside of the window, on, 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 blah, on the inside of the cover, written in a large font, Property of Helena Lawson, please call 202-555-0106 to return. I feel like I'm staring at it for an eternity before it finally registers. Seriously? Embarrassment and a little anger rise in my chest as I feel extremely stupid for trying to pry information out of a receptionist instead of just checking inside the diary. It's only 8.21 p.m., and surely they won't be asleep yet. Trying to ignore the apprehensive feeling whispering in my ear, I dial the number. Do I just... tell her I was snooping through her diary? I mean, surely she'll understand if it's to return it, right? But instead of any of the options I'm expecting, a second surprise awaits me. Sorry, but the phone you've called is no longer active. If this is your number, please call cust 
I cut the pre-recorded message off before releasing a large sigh, though it might as well have been a groan. I tossed my phone onto my bed, closed the book, and decided to deal with it tomorrow. Quickly grabbing my laptop, I started moving and grabbed my food, ready to settle in for the night. Rushing out of Edmund Hall, I rushed, through the I rushed through the busy crowd of students leaving their classes. Biology took a little bit longer to finish than expected. It's only five minutes past our meetup time, but it leaves a bad impression if I'm late to the first meeting. Even with running the rest of the way, it takes a couple of minutes to reach the library and I'm covered in sweat. I don't even want to know what I smell like. Curse my mustelid heritage. Maybe I should have listened to Lee and asked Lily to delay it a bit. My legs feel like bricks. The library is a lot bigger than I expected. It has three stories and students are flowing constantly in and out of the building. It takes me a while to realize that the study area is on the next floor. Upon reaching the second floor, I'm overwhelmed by just how many students there are. There's got to be at least 20 tables and almost all of them are occupied. I would be worried about not finding them, except Lee's leather jacket sticks out like a neon sign. He's certainly brave for looking so intimidating with all these people around. I'd be worried that someone might call the cops on me. Lee spots me pretty fast, an amused expression on his face. I can feel his eyes saying, Heh, I told you so, like a parent scolding the child. He leans back on his chair nonchalantly as I can see his, rip his ripped up jeans. I wonder if they're genuinely ripped or just a stylistic choice. Either way, he's definitely out of place. As I walk closer, he gives me that same gentle smile from yesterday. It's really his best feature. It turns him from some, inti some intimidating thug into a handsome thug. It's hard to explain. I just... It's just filled with so much charm that it really pulls his whole outfit together. Across the table from him isn't too surprising. It's the fox I sat next to yesterday. His attention is square on his phone. I wonder if he just doesn't notice me approaching, but his eyes flick to me for just a moment before returning to his screen. It's like he just doesn't care. It hurts a little bit, admittedly, even though he hadn't given me any reason not to believe he's f to believe he's friendly. He's still looking very downbeat, but not as uncomfortable as yesterday. It doesn't look like he's about to start clawing the table, at least. The outfit he's wearing is similar to yesterday, too, minus the vest. A simple dress shirt and tie. His fur looks considerably cleaner now, and his eyes aren't matted. His auburn eyes stand out on his dark fur. I guess he was just having a bad day. Ha <laughs> ha, handsome boy. The most unexpected member of our little group is a certain familiar otter, leaning forward on the table with a shocked look in his eyes. His astonishment doesn't last long, and he gives me a bright smile that stretches from ear to ear. He's really, yeah, he's a really the happy-go-lucky type. He's wearing a different outfit this time. Instead of his lax button-up shirt, he's now wearing a gaudy green tank top with an assortment of shapes and colors. It's a pretty stark difference to the type of clothes he had worn to class yesterday. Lee catches my attention again with a flick of his tail. He's returned to his neutral face, but there's a concern in his eyes as he studies me. Jesus, kid, you look like shit. And you look like you crawled out of a dumpster from a trailer park, so I don't think you have room to judge. The possum's expression turns to one of confusion at the vulpine's remark. His attention immediately diverts over to him. A little bit of sadness is poking through the hard exterior, but mostly just confusion at the sudden attack. By the way his ears are lowered, I think that comment stung. It's honestly really strange seeing him like this. He seemed like such an infallible statue yesterday. He's more sensitive than I thought, but then again, he does seem really caring. Anyway... <laughs> An unfamiliar woman's voice catches my attention, and I turn to who I can only assume is Lily, standing in front of her chair with her hands clasped in front of her chest. I'd completely forgotten she was here. The others are such eccentric characters, they dragged all my attention to them. She's a small canine, definitely shorter than me, which is pretty rare. Most people tend to dwarf me by at least a couple of inches. She's a Shibu, uh, Shiba Inu. Like from that game, Ghostwire Tokyo. <laughs> That's where they came from. Shibu, Shiba Inu came from Ghostwire Tokyo. <laughs> Her features are soft and comforting, a stark contrast to our fellow Volpine and Marsupial members. She's wearing a light yellow cardigan. It looks it looks hand-knit and very comfortable. It's a nice contrast to her rather dark fur color. Underneath, she's wearing a cute pink dress that only goes halfway down to her thigh. I can see the lighter fur color of her inner thighs, causing me to look back up to her face, my ears burning with embarrassment. She's got a smile on her face. Her Hers, feel, hers feels very maternal and subdued, unlike that otter's boisterous giant grin. Wallace, please take a seat. She's gesturing to the seat across from her. Seriously, please, there's been a fair bit of bickering, and I want to start so we can all introduce ourselves. Hopefully things mellow out. For a split second, I think she's kidding, but despite her genuine smile, there's traces of fatigue scattered across her features. Not enough for me to worry, but enough to see it's a little tiring. I quickly take my seat, not wanting to hold her up, and before anyone else can say anything else, Lily continues. So, as you can probably guess, I'm Lily. Lily Rose. Yes, it's a weird name. No, I'm not from a family of florists. 
She gives a slight, a light chuckle at her own joke. It's a warm laugh that causes my lips to twist into a grin. It's so contagious. We've already introduced ourselves while we were waiting, so I'll just introduce you to them now. She gestures over to her right, towards the out-of-place marsupial. This is Ash. A sudden glare in her direction forces her to cut herself off, though she brushes it off with a laugh pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, this is Lee Scott. It's, he's rather quiet from what I can tell. Yeah, we've met. He saved my butt and I chatted with him after class. He's pretty cool, though. He keeps treating me like a kid. I'll stop when you stop acting like a kid. Despite his fast retort, I smile. With my, a smile is visibly growing for everyone to see. What catches my eye the most is that the inside of his ear is turning slightly more pink. I don't think he's used to being complimented. Are you doing all right, kid? Not hurting anywhere. You still had a rather hard thump against me. I'm fine. It's not like I smacked into the ground. You really saved me there. I'm still pretty hard. Had to check. For a second, I think he's trying to show off or keep up some kind of badass facade, but his face looks serious. I can't tell if that makes me worried or not, or curious. Hmm. <laughs> Can I check? The smooth, familiar voice of the otter from yesterday asks next to me, and, and I nearly let out a sigh. He's been flirty with me so far, but this is rather shameless. <laughs> Expecting a teasing or lecherous expression on the otter, I'm left, agap, I'm left agap by the genuine curiosity across his face. He's already leaning across the table, his excitement palpable. There doesn't seem to be any of that playful flirtiness in his body language until he notices me examining him. Then his eyes flick over to me and give me a wink. Wink. Doesn't seem like he's too interested in the other guys. I'm not sure if that makes me happy or embarrassed. Being flirted with is not something I'm used to. Is this even flirting, or is he playing with me? But I can't exactly be sure. Okay, okay, boys, we're getting a little off topic, even if watching you guys is fun. Now Lily's wearing an even larger smile than before. It doesn't rival the otters, but she looks happier now than we would, uh, that we're getting along better. Well, then the guy next to you is... Oscar! Oscar Castle! He immediately bounces over to me and wraps an arm around my shoulder. Oh! This guy has no concept of personal space, does he? I already know your name, too, so we're on even footing now. It's a cute name. Well, wait, you do? Yeah, she kind of called you that a few minutes ago. Are you even listening? The words are cut off so abruptly that I wonder if someone stopped him, but instead he's looking down at the table with an annoyed expression, his left hand tugging awkwardly at his ear. Before I can muster up the start of a response to the fox's strange behavior, Oscar's bouncing and light tugging brings my attention back to him. Man, don't act so snappy. We knew his name before he even got here. It's not hard to figure out when you have a list of names and we met everyone else already. Oscar's awkward wording only helps to highlight his naturally bubbly personality. He's definitely He definitely isn't the type to worry about the details. I wish I could be like that. Hmm. One thing that's beginning to worry me is the other people in the library. Our contact and bouncing around got the attention of the people around us. They don't look annoyed, just confused. Uh, Oscar, everyone's looking! He lets out a deep chuckle, his chest vibrating against my cheek. I have to tilt my neck back far to be able to see his face. That massive smile shows no care for the audience around us. Bah! Don't worry about them. They don't care. They just want to get their work done and go home. I'm about to complain again, but he takes his arm off me before I do. But I don't want to make you uncomfortable. You're getting that look you had in front of the lecture hall yesterday. A breath, a breath I didn't know I had been holding in, in is finally released, only to be cut off by a quiet gasp as I feel something touching my tail. It's Oscar's tail! Normally I just assume it's a mistake, except that he runs it down the entire length of my tail before slithering back to his seat. He's, uh... He's really forward, isn't he? Careful, you're not gonna overheat him. Oh, I'm sorry, let me repeat that, guys. Careful, you're gonna overheat him. My eyes snap over to Lee, and I'm suddenly very aware of how hot my ears are. The possum is easily able to see exactly what the otter was doing. I'm fine, I'm just a bit embarrassed. Glancing up at Oscar, he's looking rather proud of himself. Once again, I'm left in a confusing spot of, of if his teasing is supposed to be genuine flirting or just playful ribbing. <laughs> you look like a tomato. I can even see her blush through your fur. I'm not used to this kind of attention, okay? People don't tend to really approach me often, or that very affu affectionate and affectionate, affe affectionate, affectionate and public, <laughs> affectionate. <laughs> if you call that affection, oh no. I wish people would annoy me less. Are you always this much of a downer? You sound like someone just killed your pet. Sorry, not all of us have the brains of a peanut and can be satisfied with flashing lights. Hey, that's a little... But I'm cut off this time by Oscar's laughing. He doesn't look upset with what I said at all. In fact, he's still got that massive smile on his face. 
He's not wrong. I do love a good light show. It reminds me I haven't been to a club in ages. The fox looks somewhat surprised by this. Not upset. In fact, he looks relieved. What's going on with him? He doesn't like to show vulnerability, so he uses insults as a way of keeping others at a distance. It's his little buffer zone. Hey! Psychology came in handy. <laughs> Lily and Lee are looking at the two of them with a mixture of confusion and concern. Sorry. Yes Sorry. Yesterday was a bit of a rough day, and I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I don't mean anything by it. When I insult you, I mean. I'm just a bit of an ass and say things without thinking. What? I think they're pretty funny. I don't mind. I wonder for a second if he's kidding, but then I remember just how insanely positive he is, and I don't even need to check his face to see if he's being genuine. I've heard worse. <laughs> I glance over to the possum with a furrow to my brow, the memory of his crestfallen ears after what the fox said to him earlier still fresh in my mind. He seems to notice my confused glare and looks back with his own confused expression before quickly shifting back to his calm stoicism. I was more of shock. I was pretty sudden. I've been called much worse. His face is pretty neutral and hides his feelings well, but I can see the inners of his ears turning a darker shade of pink. I guess when you have such large ears, you can only hide so much. He's got such a scary appearance, but he doesn't feel like threatening anymore. When you see someone blush, it's hard to be as scared of them as I used to be. The others look pretty confused at that comment, but before they can get back, in back, into, back into it, Lily barges back into the conversation. At this rate, we're going to be here all day with introductions. Lastly, we have our last member. He's... <laughs> Lucas, right? The fox looks surprised at my guess. It's different to see him so shocked. The way his ears point straight up is kind of cute. How did you know that? Well, I kind of know everyone else's names now. So only Lucas is left for you. All of them were read out in class and you're the only one left. Oh, right. He goes right back to he goes right back to pouting, now looking away from the group. He's definitely an interesting character. We, uh, kind of sat next to each other. In, in class, I mean. I remember. Don't worry. You were pretty nosy. A grimace covers my face, contorting all my features. I really pushed my nose somewhere I didn't belong yesterday. I should have just left him alone. He seems to notice this, and his ears press flat against his head. Not the reaction I'd been expecting. Damn it, I'm sorry. I, you were just helping, and I bit your head off. Reaching his hands up, he grabs the tips of his ears and tugs them downwards. Grip tight and length taut. It looks pretty painful. It's quiet, but I hear a pained whimper coming from the fox. Scratch that, it's definitely painful. No, it's fine. You were having a bad day and I was being intrusive. No, you weren't. You were fine. I was just being an asshole. You still are being an asshole, for reference. It sounds harsh, but his tone feels closer to a mom telling off his kid. Ugh, I know. He begins pulling on his ears harder and it's too painful to watch. I can imagine them ripping at the base and it's such an unpleasant thought if I can't bear to watch it any longer. Without really thinking, I stand up and lunge over the table, grabbing his arms tightly and pushing them up. I'm expecting some resistance, but he's not giving me any. He's staring down at me with a bewildered expression on his face, and all I can do for a few moments is stare back. You look like you were in pain. You should, uh, probably stop that. I don't let go of his hands, worried he might freak out and start pulling again. His expression still frozen in the same shocked look. You were hurting your ears. I mean, you were tugging on them pretty tight. You shouldn't do that, okay? He gives me a slow nod, the rest of his face frozen in a mixture of shock and total astonishment. I can see the skin flushing to a darker shade of red, visible through his dark fur. With a nervous laugh, I release his wrists. He looks down at his hands, as if he's not sure what to do with them. It's odd to see him be so docile. You okay? He yeah, sorry, I just wasn't expecting that. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. You're, you're fine, thanks. No problem. Not just for that. Yesterday, too. You were trying to help, and honestly, it felt nice to have someone check in on me. The smile he gives me causes my ears to burn alongside the foxes, and now I'm hyper-aware of, of how I'm lying across the table in a busy library. There's palpable silence amongst the group. I don't even look to see the others' reactions as I slide back into my chair. You look really, cl you look really cute when you blush, dude. I'm snapped back to reality by the shameless comment the otter next to me just spouted. <laughs> Maybe you should look more like that and less pouty. If it was anyone else, I would have assumed they were making fun of him, but there's always this sense of sincerity in his voice. Lucas seems to notice this, too. His eyes wide as saucers, and he sits up straight. Wow, his entire body looks like it's prickling up, ears all the way to his tail. Suddenly, that high-strung image of him is, is shattered as he slams his hand out on the desk loudly, causing Lily and myself to jump. So, what's the topic for this stupid shit? What? The project for the class, you know, the reason we're fucking wasting our time here. Surely you didn't forget that already, you're not that dense, right? He 
He's getting aggressive again. Looks like he lashes out when he's embarrassed, too. It's a little cute, honestly. Hard to take seriously with that look on his face. Though, I could do without that massive attention-grabbing commotion. The whole study area got quiet and everyone's looking at us. Lucas notices, too, and whips his head around to the other tables, a fiery look in his eyes. What?! Lucas yells out to the entire floor, everyone continuing to stare, and I feel myself begin to sweat under their gaze. It's not like the fox looks much, much, much better than that. His ears are twitching constantly, and his claws are digging into the table. Even Oscar falters at that, his smile shrinking down to just a small, nervous smirk. I don't think things went as planned. Hey, man, I didn't mean anything, but... A glare from the fox shuts Oscar up. It's a mixture of annoyance and a bit of fear. After a few seconds of silence, Lucas relents and sits back in his chair, though it looks more like he's trying to crush himself into it. I take back what I said about barely being able to see his blush before. Now it looks like he's changing the fur color around his muzzle. It's so intense. Alright guys, we're going to stop it right there for now. Hey, you found a little, you know, we got a little, uh, I don't know, I don't think we got a, um, uh, text from, uh, Lee in the last episode, in the last run. So that, that was pretty interesting. Um, I have a few theories about Lee, but I'm going to keep them to myself for right now to see if they actually turn out to, to hold water. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Lee's Path. Violet Memoir, or Violet Memoir, Lee's Path, if you like. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And give a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!